Welcome to the Kind of Funny Screencast. As always, I'm Tim Geddes, joined by the birthday boy himself, Greg Miller. Hello, Tim. How are you? I am fantastic. Very excited to have you on this here Kind of Funny Games cast. We also have the new face of video games, Blessing, Eddie Oye Jr. Hello, Tim. How are you? Happy birthday, Greg Miller. Thank you. Yeah, excited exactly. to be here with you, Blessing. Yeah, I'm excited to be Let's here keep... with you on your 28th. You yeah, exactly. Happy 28th birthday, age. Greg. <laughs> <laughs> and, of course, the Nitro Rifle, Andy Cortez. Happy birthday, Greg Miller. Fuck you, Andy. Fuck. Damn. Holy wow. shit. How much did you miss Greg last week, Andy? Zero <laughs> percent. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, it's such a good us. moment on in review. Come on. <laughs> joining us for this this very special episode, of course, is it's Christmas in end of April, almost May. Joey Noel. Hello. Also, I like that you intro this as screencast. Did I really? <laughs> you did. <laughs> I think it's because we were talking about it earlier. Holy shit, man. What a what a world this is. You <laughs> wow. know what I mean? Uh, yeah. Old Whatever. habits die hard. It's going to be fun. This is the right, games cast. Each and every week we get together, <laughs> talk about video games, all the things that we love about them. You can get the show on YouTube.com slash kind of funny games or roosterteeth.com in video form. If audio form is more your thing, search your favorite podcast service for kind of funny games cast. And we'll be right there for you. If you want to get the show ad free, if you want to watch it live as we're recording, and if you want the exclusive post show, you got to go to patreon.com slash kind of funny games, just like our Patreon producers, the nanobiologist, Tyler Ross, Joseph or Yusuf, Trent Barry, Mizuki, Man Bear Paradox, Julian the Gluten Free Gamer, Alex J. Sandoval, Sancho West Gaming, James Hastings, Elliot, and Casey Kern have done. Thank you all. Oh, so very, very much. Uh, today we're brought to you by Upstart, Fitbot, and Dr. Squatch. But I'll tell you about all of those later because I want to get right into it. Me and Joey have something very important to talk about, and that is new Pokemon Snap. Joey. Oh, snap. Here. We're it's playing finally, it. Yeah, oh, snap. Thank I you, can't believe. Thank you. It's what I do. Exactly <laughs> what I, I wanted. You're welcome. That's the type of energy we need today. Exactly. Joey, you've been waiting so long for My a sequel to Pokemon life. Snap for this did i ever think that this day would arrive never in my entire life but one day last year i woke up to a barrage of notifications and my live streams had come true with new pokemon snap still don't understand the name don't understand why they chose that why there's new pokemon that you're snapping pics of man it's not the old it's the old game but it's new again no there are old pokemon in it there yeah there's i mean it's old ones too there's a little bit of everything it's the new version be called all pokemon snap yeah Current, well, all, current version. Not all, all Pokemon. Pokemon. Oh, it's all Pokemon. Like exactly. Some Pokemon Joey, Snap. <laughs> so, me and you have both been playing a lot of this game over over the last while, and uh, we we are both in end game territory of the game Correct. at this point. You've snapped them all. We've snapped a lot of gotta them. We snap snapped a whole, gotta snap Only a whole bunch them. of them, right? Uh, but Joey, what are your thoughts yes. about new Pokemon Snap? I am having a lot of fun. I mean, it if you like. Pokemon Snap, I feel like you're going to like this. It's not, like, completely revolutionary in terms of, like, mechanics or anything like that. Um, it's the same thing. You're on a fixed track uh, through an environment, and then you can trigger different <clears throat> Pokemon to come out using items and stuff like that. Um, and then you're trying to get the best ranking. Uh, something that I like at, that they've changed about this one is that now with, with each Pokemon you have to picture, there's... Of four different star ratings, one through four, that um, you're trying to get in your. Is it called a Pokedex? Is that what they call it? No, yeah. no, no, no. It's, it's a, the photo uh, Pikadex. Photo, photo Dex. Photo Dex. That's photo what it is this time. There we go. Um, so, yeah, so you're trying. It's not with the original Pokemon Snap. It was just one picture per Pokemon. And now you're trying to get four different ones. The first ones being just like pretty basic whatever pictures and then the four star ones are harder to find because you're trying to trigger like special abilities and stuff like that with the fluff fruit which is a new update i don't know why they changed the name on it but now the apples are officially called look fluff how cute fruit. that is though look how cute that is it look is. at this little fucker <laughs> god look hey, at this is that guy. like the pre-pichu <laughs> no okay unrelated to the pichu family just, every, just every, like almost every generation the last couple gens there's always been like a pikachu look-alike yeah. One that they they tried to sneak in there. If you go far back enough, you could I'm sure get some DNA like testing done, and I'm sure there's some similarities there. Mm -hmm. Twenty three and mm -hmm. me, but for Pokemon, mm -hmm. yeah, perfect. Twenty three. Um, 
Thanks. <laughs> Love it. Um, so yeah, so those are back. Pester balls have been replaced by Illumina orbs, which pretty is kind of what just got shown there. It makes them all like light up and do fun things. That's cool. Um, and then there's like a melody, which is the same thing. Little polka flute. I, exactly. I don't know why they changed the name of that one too. Why they just call it melody. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so all of those are back. And then the new mechanic that I really liked was the scanning one. So sometimes on the screen, you'll see like a little blue uh, Pokeball at the bottom center of the screen. And that means that there's like a point of interest or something nearby. If you scan, it'll show you all the Pokemon that are like in your field of view. And then some like if you haven't seen one, there's question marks or if there's one that's hidden. Um, but then it'll also show you um, like alternate routes and stuff like that that you can take. You can kind of branch off of the mainline path. Um, or if there's something you haven't identified like that. Um, it's pretty cool. I like yeah, all this, of those mechanics. What, they just showed it right there. Uh, Barrett, actually, if you can go back just a little bit, the, the scanning thing that Joey's talking about, uh, if you go back just, yeah, somewhere around there. Um, every yeah. once in a while, like that question mark will pop up and the uh, exclamation point at the bottom of the screen, and then you kind of need to, to scan. It shoots out this thing that a certain area around you will light up, and it'll tell you where there's Pokemon and where there's like kind of points of interest or like different uh, events that might might pop up which change how the Pokemon act or bring out different Pokemon or whatever, like causing things like this, <laughs> you yeah. know, where the Pidgeotto just grabbed the Magikarp out of the water. Andy, does the, do does the, race? yeah, does the Poke Flute play like an ocarina where you can do different button inputs and make a different song or is it just kind of, you play the song and it just goes. So it's, yes. it's not actually the Poke Flute. It's just like, it's supposed to be, but it's uh, at some point your camera gets upgraded with that. Uh. Like the game, there's a lot of upgrading where it's just like you, you start and then every single time you complete a level, like something gets added to like add a little bit more dynamicism to the whole thing. Uh, but the, uh, your camera kind of just makes some noise and all you do is hit R R one. Got it. It, it okay. just kind of like sets off this uh, audio sound. And then you go back to the old levels and discover newer things with your new abilities. Yeah. Exactly. So you, every time you run through a level, you get XP through, the scoring on your pictures and then those instead of getting like an overall score for your pokemon report they get the xp stays within the track that you're on and then you can upgrade those to different research levels and then with each research level you get either those hidden hidden branching paths you get new pokemon that'll spawn depending on your research level or like they'll spawn in different areas um so you can get new poses and stuff like that what's the creative yeah. player like can you is there a creative it's player? horrible Yes, there is. <laughs> and it, so there's not create a player. There's uh, choose you just a choose, choose a template. And there's like eight different uh, character characters you get to choose mm. from. Uh, I want to start this off not being negative. Uh, and I, I want to just real quick oh, no, say that means that, he's going like, to get negative. Uh, oh, oh, absolutely. I mean, like he, the, to. But I want to like Pokemon's new to, Pokemon. To start, yeah. to start positive, there's a lot to like from this. And uh, it this is going to be uh, an internet fan favorite video game where I th this there's going to be pictures posted on on Twitter constantly there's going to be streams of people having fun like role playing taking this super seriously yeah, and I love this right here are, I love them editing the fact that you can go in and edit your pictures and do all the stuff exactly that you photo mode is really cool yeah there's a photo mode that uh you know functions kind of similarly yeah. to a lot of modern fo uh, photo modes and it, it's cool because you took the picture you know it's oh, not kind of just just uh you know playing through the game like in in spider-man or whatever and like having a still and like messing with it this you kind of feel a little bit more like you did something and then going in and editing it, it's uh kind of fun as well um but the the game is very 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 similar to the first one like joey was saying where you're kind of just doing the same thing over and over again and it at points feels mind-numbingly stupid but every <laughs> single time it starts to feel like that for too long there's an aha moment and something happens where you're like oh shit I, I threw this thing there, which caused this to happen. And that's cool. And it feels like a special thing that you discovered. Like this game's <laughs> really good about making you feel like you caused nature to do something that it wasn't going to do otherwise. Cause you've been on this track 15 times before and yeah. that Pokemon never jumped off that way, you know? Mm. Um, so things like that are, are, are really kind of good. And I think the game does a good job of rewarding you with, uh, uh, reasons to want to go back it's very much a one more match Whoa. type game where you get to the end and you're like oh man i definitely can get that shot better i know yeah. what caused him to jump off the the ledge i want to make that happen again uh and so that's all great but then to to go to the negatives the the game very much feels dated and like it should not cost nearly as much as it does like it, this 
is to me a perfect example of an Apple Arcade game that I would review highly where I'm like, okay, cool. There's a lot there, but this kind of feels a little uh, lost at, out of time where um, I remember when the Wii U was first out, everyone was like, oh my God, Pokemon Snap would be perfect on this. And they kind of envisioned themselves like using the gamepad to move around. This doesn't do that. This is kind of just the N64 game, but a lot prettier. There's no uh, AR. Then, there's no motion. Control. No AR. There so are motion controls. There, there is motion controls, but you know <laughs> they they kind of just work as motion versions of the, the analog controls, as opposed to like a new way to play. And I think that's something where it's like we just had so many experiences, whether it's with Pokemon Go, honestly, as a good example, or yeah. at, at, with VR titles, that this kind of feels limited in in a lot of ways. And you can tell that they were trying to throw a lot of stuff in to, to pad it out to justify the cost. Um, and examples of that include having you be able to choose a character, which you see pretty often. Like you see your character. There's a lot more story in this game than I Yeah, it's expected. fully voice acted this time, which it wasn't in the original. Really? And there's like actual cutscenes and stuff like that. Yeah. Which is and, an uh, upgrade. With that though, it's kind of like, okay, so you're letting me choose a character, but okay, I'm, I'm either the blonde haired, blue eyed guy or the brown haired, uh, brown eyed guy. And I'm like, I want brown hair and blue eyes. Why, why can't I do that? And it's just like, I'm finding myself often with the game kind of asking like, well, why not? There's only four control options that you can choose and none of them are how I want to play, which feels like <laughs> most of the time I'm kind of fighting against the controls. And it's one of those classic Nintendo things of, it does feel like that's part of the design. It does feel like you're supposed to struggle whip it around to get the perfect shot you want. So you go back and you're like, okay, next time I know exactly what I got to do. It's just, it's frustrating. And I feel like uh, there's a lot of little things like that, that I wish that there, that they would not give the illusion of choice when there actually isn't any. And I'd rather if they were kind of just like, here's what it is, go forward. Um, but with that, I do think that there's something just oddly peaceful about playing the game. And, you know, that's like not a surprise, but uh, going through it, I feel like it, it does a good job of feeling like a Disneyland ride, like not one of the stressful Disneyland rides, but just one where you're kind of just there taking in all the scenery or whatever, but it does a good job of adding enough engaging moments and things like the little uh, scanning popping up. I feel like it's very well done where you're never going too long of a stretch without the game telling you to do something but it's never overwhelming where you're just like, oh crap, I'm trying to do this and they're pulling me this way and this way. It's kind of just like, okay, cool. I was getting a little bored just looking at the same species of Pokemon right here, but yeah. oh, there's some glowing thing over there and I'm scanning it and I wonder what that's going to open. And as you go through the research paths, like Joey's talking about, like essentially you're graded on uh, the pictures you take and the four levels she's talking about, you get points based on each of the four levels. So per level you're in, you can uh, take, let's use Pikachu as an example. There's a one star, two star, three star, four star Pikachu. You get points that go towards your experience for each of the stars. So it's, the game kind of incentivizes you to go back and take worse pictures if you get a four yeah. star to begin oh, with. To, for com oh, for wow. completion reasons. Yeah, yeah and it. but not just completion reasons, but to be able to get to new areas and levels in the level even. So there's research level one. And you go through and it's like, it takes 30,000 experience to get to research level two in the beach level, right? And Pikachu, the one star will give you 2,000 experience. The two star gives you 3,000, so on, so on. But you can go through, play that level four times. And if you get the one, two, three, and four star Pikachu, that adds up to, let's say, 15,000 experience. That's a big chunk of the experience levels you need to unlock research level two. When you unlock research level two on the beach, that's when things start radically changing on the level you've already done over and over again. And there'll be you different start to see things there in the water and, and new Pokemon and they what interact with the each other now. <laughs> There's something in the water. Children. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But but on top of that, it's like it I feel like the game does a good job of having the the kind of gameplay loop of you play the level the first time and it feels just like a basic ass snow white ride at Disneyland type thing. But then when you play it again, you're like, okay, I'm real close to getting to that next level. And I know something cool is going to happen. You play it one more time, you get that. And then that kind of loop starts over again. But before it starts getting like, oh, I'm over this, they'll throw something at you where it's like, oh, well, now you have this uh, illumination ball or whatever it's called that completely changes how the Pokemon you've already interacted with a whole bunch of times interact with you. 
and it feels exciting. Like the game does a good job of like making That's the good. dumbest, most repetitive things <laughs> feel kind of hype. And it's like these Pokemon are never fucking looking at you. And it's frustrating when you're playing where it's like, turn the fuck around and let me take your goddamn picture. Hey! But then when you, when you <laughs> just yeah, seriously, last. but it's like, you know, I'll, I'll see this, this freaking, and I'm just, I'm just throwing names out there and like random, but Porygon. like, there, here's a, a, a Porygon, whatever. Right. And it's like, Porygon, Hey, look at me, look at me. And it doesn't do shit. And you take a picture, you get your one star point and you're like, yeah. fine. But then the next time you go back on research level two, it's like the Porygon's moving around a little more. And you're like, oh, shit. You take a picture and you get the the restar. But then next time you go back in, you have the illumination ball. So you can throw the ball at him and he starts glowing. You take a picture there. Then if you play the little music of the flute, it like makes him do a little dance. Like, (laughs) you know what I mean? Do a flip, Spider-Man. Starts twerking. Uh, (laughs) Yeah. So it's like it's little things like that that if any of this sounds enticing, you're going to love this game. Can't fucking wait. I'm in. I'm in. They got me, Andy. Let's go. Seriously, to me, the, the the biggest negatives I have are the price. It is egregious. It is absolutely yeah. not worth the price. I'm just straight up saying. What that. is it, sixty? Um, yeah, it's full retail price, and I I, I can't believe that <laughs> they went to um, eighty this time. I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> These um, idiots will buy it. They love Pokemon. And that's not to say there's not a lot of content there. Um, it there is. It's just, and I do think that uh, Andy was talking about completionists. I think completionists are really gonna like this. Uh, it, it, it's a game that I think you can play for a long time and, and get a lot out of uh, if you really want to snap them all, you know. But it's the quality of life stuff, the Nintendo bullshit that really kind of like brought the experience down for me. Where I'm like, honestly, this is exactly what I expected, and that sucks. I wanted, I wanted something more, and little things that. I understand would dr- dramatically change what the game is, but even being able to speed up your little cart would be really nice. Cause if I'm like, I'm trying to, I know I'm trying to take a picture of this damn Lapras. I know it's at the end of this level and the levels yeah. aren't ever that long, but yeah. it's still kind of like, I don't want to wait the two and a half minutes with a bunch of freaking Rattatas running around when I'm trying to get to the <laughs> Lapras. You know what I mean? Damn but yeah. that's what the game is. It's just the, the game is very much doing the same thing over and over and finding all the little differences. If you've ever had fun doing a spot the difference game, that's kind of this <laughs> just for, for many hours. I, I want to tell you how jealous I was last week. I was off for moving, and at one point I glanced. I went into Slack, and I saw you and Joey talking about Pokemon. And I was like, you motherfuckers. God. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, that's the thing, man. Go for it, Joe. Oh, I was going to say, I do. Th- I, the price is, I was thinking about this earlier, like, would I recommend people buying this at a full price? And it's like Pokemon first party. So like who, who knows if this will ever go on sale really. But I think if you are a big fan nostalgically, I think you should buy it. I think it's fun and it's like a fun return to form, especially since you can't really play Pokemon Stop 64 anywhere. Um, you can't on the Wii U for all 13,000 the... people that own that. <laughs> um, really? I do think that they do a good job of like getting you to try different things and like pointing you in the right directions, even if you're, they're not doing it. They have like a whole task system. So pretty much the professor will say like, Hey, these are like specific points of interest within each level. See if you can get specific Pokemon to like do these things. Like, Oh, why is this fruit burnt? See if you can figure out what Pokemon did to that and stuff like that. So I feel like they kind of point you in the right. So close. (laughs) I feel like they point you in the right direction of, if you're kind of lost, you're like, I've gone through this a million times. I can't get to the next level. They do give you hints that don't feel like hints of how to keep progressing in each level. So it doesn't feel like you're just not getting any points every time you go through. Um, and I do miss all the music. I wish I had better music because I didn't really care about it. The, yeah, the music is the, graphically the game looks very pretty. This is some of the prettiest pretty, we've yeah. ever seen the the Pokemon. Uh, some of the the landscapes are a little more barren than I would expect. Um, it's kind of like when we Andy saw that and, and Blessing too when we watched the the Pokemon uh, Arceus trailer, the Breath yeah, of the Wild looking one, where we're looking mm-hmm. at yeah Legends. That's what it is. Uh, where it's kind of like okay, like I'm 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 interested, but like I'm hoping that this ends up filling out a little bit more. Seeing it in this game, it's kind of like, oh no, they they don't care. Like this is just we're we're in the desert, and it's it's just a desert. It's just <laughs> sand. There's nothing else going on with that sand, you know. Um, but it's not bad because it's about the Pokemon, and it's about making the Pokemon stand out among the kind of big bold colors, and they do a good job with that. And when there are moments that are a little more jungly, and there's 
like branches and trees, you have that feeling of like, fucking move trees. I see that thing in there. I'm trying to get it. And yeah. uh, probably my favorite moment I've had with the game is uh, I was playing with some jungle level and I'm snapping left and right. Some like, jungle a bunch level. of pictures. <laughs> and uh, then by the end of it, uh, when, so you, you, you do the course, you take your 70 pictures or whatever, and then uh, you can submit one picture per Pokemon to the professor. Per Which run. I on um, I have a, a bone to pick with that because uh, there's yeah. four different star levels for each of them. So it seems like you should be able to pick one picture at each star level to submit. But no, you can only pick one per Pokemon. It is gameplay padding for sure. And it, it feels it. And yeah, I'm right there with you, Joey, where I totally understand why they did it. But it's like, mm -hmm. all right, guys, we, we see right through this. Um, but the, the the thing for me, the moment that I was like, oh, my God, is I submitted all the Pokemon and I was like, huh, there was only like 13 pictures that I can count of Pokemon I got, but I don't know what the, the 14th that they have here is. And I saw it and it was a fucking Metapod, but it was just in a tree and I didn't even realize it was a Metapod, but I caught a picture <laughs> of it. And when it popped up and said Metapod, I thought it was just a fucking leaf. And I literally <laughs> by myself in this room was like, oh shit, that was a leaf pod. <laughs> and I was just like, holy crap, this game managed to get like a wondrous That's moment tricky. out of me of like, mm -hmm. of like surprise from this freaking Metapod being stuck in a tree, you know? So it's like that, it reminded me of like seeing the surfing Pikachu in the in the first game. And um, so far I haven't really found too many of those like wondrous moments. Uh, but when they, when they happen, it's really, really cool and really rewarding. Yeah, it's got to feel like you, you're seeing something special. Like I think that's what we like so much about the original um the gameplay padding stuff just seems like it that just seems like game design to me like i, I don't know i don't uh, it didn't seem too egregious to you know the dude isn't looking at you and you're like oh i wish he looked at me you know and it's like a real safari time, it's like a real trip to the zoo it's a real safari the next time you go out you pay more and the lions you know oh this this guy paid more let me look oh, he brought him. he brought a chicken this time yeah <laughs> yeah I, I don't know that seems that seems like it's just part of kind of its its design and i don't I, i'm stoked for it i'm really excited i would me too i just based on what you're saying i would pay 60 dollars for this game and i i will because we don't get those games for free <laughs> nintendo um, never sends that many yeah extra so like that I, i'm stoked for this i've been waiting for this moment for a long time yeah, and to be clear, uh, I don't think that the Pokemon not looking at you is the gameplay padding. Like that's the gameplay. That is the loop because as you play through the levels and you you get the different things you can do. Because when you start off, you don't even have the apples. Then you get the apples, and then you get the globe, and then you get the, the, you start the off glowing with? thing. Just Nothing. A camera. Just a camera. Just and a they're camera. not looking at you. Yeah. So it's like yeah, just that's the rookie in the field. No, just no, a you get melody there. later. But uh, what we're talking about is the padding. Is the fact that they want you to get the four different pictures of each pokemon but they only count one per pokemon at the end of each level. round yeah where Got it's it. like you can snap a shit ton of pictures of them and it's like i feel like four of them should count if they're across the four different star levels because there'll be many times where there are 15 different porygons in the level <laughs> yeah, hell yeah but only one picture counts for them you know and so it kind of just feels like they're just trying to get you to go back and it, it, it so just, you can only do, you can like only padding. submit one porygon every level yeah. Exactly. Gotcha. Yeah. Even you if you to, have a you four to, star, a two star, and a one star picture of them. Do you get to pick it or is it the first one no matter yes. what? Yes. Okay. So you get to you pick, pick it. But there's also just an auto sort option, uh, which you know just saves the most time. And and honestly, yeah, it's just a lazy the best photographer, thing to do. Tim, right? Well, no, you're never gonna work at the New I've York never Times. Like the auto that. sort option. Oh, really? No, I go through and I look through all my pictures and figure out which one has the best composition. Is it placed right? Like, all that. Yeah, see, Joe, Joe, Joey, Joey's a Peter Parker. Tim's and Eddie Brock. All right? It's it's like when your wow, smartphones exactly. are like, we'll we'll take a photo. Oh, I like we'll pick this photo out of this birth shot. When your smartphones do that, it's like, no, I want to pick what. No, like, <laughs> okay, you don't get that's computers. All fair. Computer, you can't tell me what art is. All right, yep. Yep. that is fair. Yep. But the problem is the computer then is the one deciding what art is, and that's my problem. Is if I, every time I try to pick a picture, it's never the one that's most valuable. Because the way that the game works is very specific about what they want you to do, about getting the face right in the center, getting other Pokemon in the background, making sure they're looking at you, if they're doing something special, if they're glowing. It's like, yeah. it's so, so, and now so they want you to have, uh, like, pretty backgrounds, too, which is new. Which I was like, yeah. I don't know, I'm not good enough at this to get the background shot of this right. But whatever. Yeah, and there's cool stuff, and it's rewarding when it, like, works out. But more often than not... I, I'm finding that I get a higher score for pictures that don't look as good as the ones I, I would choose. 
And so Got it's it. like, that's where it kind of falls apart for me. But it's like, I get it. It's a game and taking, trying to gamify just taking pictures of these freaking Pokemon is, is difficult. Is there uh, any and, way to manipulate the way the movement on the track works? No. You can spin well, kind of. 360 on it, like in your little pod thing, but you can't yeah. like deviate off the track unless it has one of the offshoots. So you're always and they're only on the, in very the specific places. Yeah, you're always on the track. It's always moving at the exact same speed. It, it never stops you. You can turn around 360. There's like a quick 180 button, no which is super, super useful oh, okay. uh, to be able to just turn around real quick and, and turn back. I, I use that all the time. Um, but yeah, then there'll be certain points you get to in certain levels that if you scan at the right time, that's very clear, you can kind of choose to go left or right. And then you get like different detours and shit as you go through. But that's really all the options you get in terms of traversal and motion um the one thing that i did really like is in addition to the normal gameplay modes that uh were in the first game where you kind of just go through the levels and get graded on all this stuff and joey i haven't played the, the original in so long so correct me if i'm wrong about this or somebody in the comments will i'm sure but this one also has these more like modern challenging achievement type things too where there's a whole other set of missions that the different story characters will ask you to do like specifically where they're just like oh man that Pidgeotto looks hungry you should probably feed it and it's like they're telling you exactly what to do to kind of uh get you like extra points and uh, it's like a different thing so it's not the main game mode it's like a separate side thing that it's you like can do like a task do. list yeah I think and it's, it just it like kind of feeds you to go back to the courses that you wouldn't have necessarily gone back to or stuff like that, just to try and get the Pokemon to do new things. I think it's fun. I pretty much only do them accidentally when I happen to get them on my runs. I haven't like actually sought out to do any of them, but that's definitely new in this one. Yeah. And that definitely seems to be like where the end game type really cool stuff's going to be, where if you do all those, I'm sure you'll unlock some dope stuff, but I haven't done that quite yet. Um, looking through my notes to see if there's anything else I want to make how's sure. The, how's out. the roster of Pokemon? Are you happy with what's there? Yeah, it's. I think it's a really good mix of old and new. And uh, you know, there's a whole bunch of them I don't recognize at all, just because I'm not that familiar with the, the last couple gens. But it's never disappointing. Like mm. it always contextually makes sense. Where it's like you see ones, and even if you don't know what they are, what they're doing, you're like, oh, that's kind of that's cute. This game's really cute. You know, so many oh, cute yeah, moments. And uh, you know, with that, it's just kind of like. That again, the, there's just a magic to finding these moments that feel special, like you did something, even though you didn't do shit. And uh, the perfect examples of that are like there's a tour chick hanging out with a, a Pikachu, and just seeing what they do together is so <laughs> funny because they're just kind of running around through the level, and it's like there's a lot of like environmental storytelling going on about these like <laughs> bros just hanging out at the beach, you know, that's what and... I love the most about animal videos. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh, it, and, and it, you're so right. It feels that way. It feels like Timon and Pumbaa in real life type shit <laughs> often. Uh, but when you catch other animal like Pokemon in, in weird places, like under waterfalls or whatever, and it's like, you see what they're doing, just kind of living. Those are the best moments of the game. And it's, it's funny because at the end of the day, there's not much game here. But we know that going in and judging this for what it is, I think it's, it's really good. I just don't think it's worth the, the, the money. And I think it, it would be better fitted. And I think that a lot of my criticisms would be solved if it wasn't treated like a full price console video game and treated more like a VR experience or a AR phone type situation. Interesting. Any closing yeah. words on this, Joe? Um, no, I have, I've been having a lot of fun. It's just been fun to go back. It's funny to hear Blessing ask about like the Pokemon because I've never played any other Pokemon game other than <laughs> Snap. When you play the best <laughs> game, Jerry, when you play the yeah. best Pokemon game, do why you do really I bother with back? anything else? <laughs> um, so I get obviously the most excited for anything that comes from Pokemon Snap 64, but it is fun to see all the other ones. I'm like, oh, I have no idea what that is. You're very cute. Um, but I've had like a lot of fun to go back into it. And it is that it does have that that pull in me where it's like oh i was so close if i just wouldn't have been zoomed in or if i would have turned this way then i would have been able to get the perfect shot so i do feel like that tug to go back and back and in that case i think the loop for it is good at least for what i like to or how i like to play this is exciting final questions 
This is exciting. No, I can't just, wait. Yeah, I don't I'm have a question. Stoked. I'm just I'm stoked. I'm ready to play. It's not, it I'm so like stoked it. you guys are stoked. That's awesome. I can see I, Greg I, really vibing with this in I a weird way. I was not expecting anyone else in this game's cast to care about this game. <laughs> oh, no, man. Like, I, you know, Pokemon Snap is a weird one because Pokemon Snap uh, was one of those, uh, you know, ever, during high school and, like, throughout high school when we'd go to Mike Michael Bryan's house, we would obviously uh, play Smash Brothers win that stupid championship belt. Uh, we had, you know, WrestleMania 2000 into No Mercy, all the, the uh, Golden Eye, Perfect Dark you name it and his brother was younger than us and he had pokemon snap and i remember mike making fun of him often for it and then eventually coming over and mike was legitimately playing it and so it was one of those games that i sat on the couch and watched a lot of and always really dug and i'm super in the mood for it right now to go through and have a chill relax go through you know take some photos try to get uh, pull the joey card of get the composition right i see what this edit mode is all about start playing with backgrounds and stuff like that i just like taking pretty pictures too is there an ads yeah. on the rifles <laughs> no 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 yes yeah, so i was waiting for, i was waiting for you to ask about a dash that must, mechanic yeah that must be the end game stuff Got that it. we haven't gone to we yet. haven't got there yet yeah exactly <laughs> i will also say there's a lot of loading in this game and the loading's God never damn, that long but like i swear we see the loading screen like every 10 seconds and like that's kind of seconds? not fun no, well, not every 10 seconds, not, not literally, but it's just like in between the levels aren't long enough to have as much loading around them as they do. The quantity of loading screens in between everything you're doing of going back to the lab, choosing the pictures that you're sending in, going back to the next course or choosing a course. It's like there's just a lot of loading where it just kind of feels for a game that's this slow paced. It, it kind of just feels weird that there is so much downtime where you're not even just chilling in your little pod going. You know what I mean? Did you not notice that? No, but I feel like that's this is the kind of game where like I'm playing and then I put my thing down to check my phone or whatever. So I, I probably wasn't just paying attention to it gotcha. just by nature of the fact that I this is a game that like I very much multitask during where whether it's like having something on in the background or whatever. So it wasn't making like a huge impact on my playing experience. Guys, I was all in. I was playing on the <laughs> fucking theater screen. And I was I just like, I'm not, don't I'm not missing a single Charmander, man. <laughs> you're going to shit. You're the, you're the best Pokemon photographer of all time. Oh, man. No, he I uses the auto sort. Let's not get too crazy. Joe, you've you already the proven. points. To get the Joe, points. you've already proven that you're the real artist here. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Um, the stickers and stuff are really fun. That's not my vibe for a photo mode, but I can see how with like little kids and then you'd be like, I want everybody to have a crown and a top hat and flowers and stuff like that. It'll be really fun. And I'm sure people will do really funny. I've never been it. a stickers person in photo mode, Joe. I'm the yeah. same as you. Give me a nice vignette. Give me some soft yeah. focus in some areas. Oh yeah. You Love get all of that focus. stuff for sure. Love me a soft focus. A lot of options plus. there. Yeah. And I, yeah, Joey, to your point about kids, like kids are going to love this game. Absolutely. <laughs> there is a lot for them here. Is there sixty dollars worth? I don't think so, but like, there's there is a lot, and I think the kids are gonna love the hell it's out of it. Super interesting because I remember really liking Pokemon Snap as a kid, but I don't. It's weird to think about kids playing it because it does get so technical and like it is limiting and technical at the same time in the sense that like you don't have that much range of motion that I could see it being really frustrating. So I don't know. I'm just really trying to dissect why I liked it as a kid and if kids today are still getting Yeah, I remember trying it out as a kid and being super confused. I was like, why am I not yeah. fighting things in, in this game? Like what, <laughs> what are with all these menus? It did not it did not vibe with me. I went home and played Pokemon Stadium. <laughs> there, there. Well there you go. Joey, thank you very much for joining us. You are now going you to can. leave. I am. You okay, don't care bye, guys. about anything I else. No. <laughs> <laughs> bye, Joey. And while she leaves, let me tell you about our sponsor. This episode is brought to you by Dr. Squatch. Real talk here. That soap and body wash you're using, probably not too good. It's packed with harsh chemicals, synthetic detergents, and it's brutal on your skin. If you're ready to step up your game to soap that's natural, great for your skin, and doesn't smell like a middle school locker room, Oh, we all know exactly what they're talking about here. Dr. Squatch is where it's at. Dr. Squatch is changing the way men approach hygiene with their natural personal care products that make you feel like a man and smell like a champion. I can stand by this. Gia has been loving it. I didn't expect her to love it as much as she is. Uh, there's a grapefruit IPA uh, flavor, I was about to say, scented uh, piece of soap that I love. It also, the soap, you can get this like, little clicky thing that goes into it and it has these like little like claws that grab it so you're not like slipping around with the soap and you get a nice like thing to like clean yourself off 
Big fan. Dr. Squatch's soaps come in a huge range of natural, manly scents that are going to transform your shower. And that's the other thing. Now my bathroom smells a lot better, too. It, there's just winds all around. Uh, if you really want to make it easy on yourself, you can also subscribe to Dr. Squatch, just like the hundreds of thousands of other people out there. Every month, fresh bars of, of Squatch, Squat, Squatch, ah, Squatch, show up at your door. It's super easy. They've also got a full lineup of personal care goods like deodorant, hair care, and toothpaste. Right now, new customers can get 20% off on orders of $20 or more when they go to drsquatch.com and enter code DSCKF Games. That's drsquatch.com, D R S Q U A T C H.com, code DSCKF Games for 20% off on orders of $20 or more. Um, so there, there you go. There you go. Uh, and next up, definitely, definitely want to give a shout out to Upstart. When it comes to paying off debt, it can often feel like an uphill battle. High interest rates resulting in minimum monthly payments keeps you in an endless cycle of debt. Upstart can help you get ahead. Are you carrying a credit card balance month after month? You're not the only one. High interest rates make it hard to pay off your debt, but Upstart can help. Join the thousands of happy borrowers borrowers who made that final payment, including one of my best friends who had a lot of issues, but really his biggest problem was just that the debt was all over the place. Upstart was able to help him consolidate it all. And now he's all paid off. And trust me, he's a much happier person. Whether it's paying off credit cards, consolidating high interest debt, or funding personal expenses, over half a million people have used Upstart to get a simple fixed monthly payment. You can find out how Upstart can lower your monthly payments today when you go to upstart.com slash kind of funny. That's upstart.com slash kind of funny. Don't forget to use the URL to let them know that we sent you. Loan amounts will be determined based on your credit income and certain other information provided in your loan application. Go to upstart.com slash kind of funny. And finally, shout out to FitBod. Don't get stuck doing the same workouts. Making progress towards the future you means overcoming new challenges. FitBod creates a fitness program Program that continually adapts with new exercises and dynamic intensity that adjust to how you're progressing. So you'll be challenged to meet your goals at your own pace. Uh, G has been doing this. She loves it. She loves making sure that her body is working to its utmost capabilities. And uh, again, what they're just saying here, it's just like not doing the same thing over and over. Not only is it better for your body, but also keeps it fresh, keeps it fun, keeps it sexy. Uh Fitbod creates a program based on your unique body experience and environment. Their algorithm uses data and analytics to help you build on your last workout to maximize your results. Whether you're exercising three days a week or twice a day, every workout is scientifically proven to be better than the last. Fitbod workouts are balanced to avoid overworking muscles with varied exercises to keep you sharp. If you have no equipment, no worries. Fitbod has body weight routines for those looking to get fit at home or on the go. I myself have been trying really hard uh, to better my life and and get some type of fit. And all of this stuff is true. All of these little things, it does get easier every single time. And FitBot is a fantastic program uh, that you can check out that will just get you started, you know, and the, or keep you going. Whatever it is, it's a fantastic thing. Pick up the pace on your fitness journey with FitBot today and your future self will thank you. Get 25% off your membership at fitbod.me slash kfgames. That's fitbod.me slash kfgames. 25% off at F-I-T-B-O-D dot M-E slash K-F games. And now that we're back, before we move on to you guys, I want to give two quick updates. One's a PSA and one's just an update on my Tony Hawk Platinum because I know Yay. everyone cares so oh, damn yeah. much. I am officially, officially 69 hours into playing this oh. game. Can you, can you hey, believe bada that? Bing, bada 69 hours. And I've had fun for probably 68 of them. So that's a damn quality video wow. game right there. You'll I call that out. 89. My last about Gamescast episode 69. I know. I can't believe it. He also my two biggest his, failures. Uh, his, his trophies are still private. I just wanted to point that out to everybody. Oh, and they always will be. They're mine. They're not yours. Uh, yeah. But my two, the two things I want to point out about that episode, Andy, that I, I'll never forgive myself for. One, I somehow missed it was episode 69, despite being called out Greg asking me what you number up. the episode was. Yeah. I didn't call that out. And the other thing is when we talked about the the uh, um, Snyder cut of video games, me not talking about Final Fantasy versus 13. Like mm. I've like woken up in a cold sweat like four times this week just thinking about that. Like, how did I forget that? Good. Anyways, that's not what I'm talking about. It was your reality. About. 
uh tony hawk i am level 89 i need to get to level 100 getting each level is just more and more of a grind and i can't fucking believe it but i'm getting that platinum i swear to god i've been playing online so much i've seen so many best friends coming through and it's the funniest thing because i know they're a best friend because they always come up to my character and will start just jumping (laughs) next to me (laughs) i'm just like what's up man (laughs) it's very very funny shout out to all of you you are all utterly fantastic and then the last thing i want to say is a psa um i I saw a tweet going around from Rit Nelson, W-R-I-T-N-E-L-S-O-N. Hey, uh, I, I'm unfamiliar, but that's awesome that, yeah. that you know him. Um, they made a Boom Block successor. It's on Apple Arcade. It's called Spire Blast, and every level is a pastel burst of joy. I downloaded this. I was a huge Boom, Bo- Boom Blocks fan of the day. Were you Greg Miller? Seems like a Greg Miller kid. Oh, my God. Are you kidding me? Yeah, me and Damon Hatfield. You want to talk about like just getting drunk at somebody's house and throwing a party and then playing Boom Blocks? That's what we were doing. Yeah, you want a time that's like not quite boom blocks, but definitely is like, oh man, this is scratching an itch. It is called Spire Blast, and that is all I've been doing laying in bed, just blasting away, Greg. Blast that Spire. Finger blasting away. Finger blasting away. Tim Love finger blasting in bed at night, just laying there. There it is. Look at him go. Look at him. Look at me go. Anyways, enough of my bullshit. Andy, blessing. There's a whole bunch of shooter updates out there. We got Call of Duty Warzone getting a new map. Apex Legends dropping a whole bunch of new modes and stuff. And Valorant did something that Andy's going to explain to me. Mm -hmm. Where do you want to start? Oh, we can talk about Age of, uh, Apex Legends, Bless, if you want. Yeah, I'm down to start with Apex Legends. Uh, they recently revealed their the details for their new, for their new season, Apex Legends Legacy, uh, and then revealed their big old big old uh, arenas mode, which is the new mode that's coming May fourth for Apex Legends. Me and Andy did like a whole first impressions that's going to co- go up later this week for it, but uh, it's really cool. We got to try it out. We got to play a little little bit of it, and basically what it is is three v three. They talked a lot in the preview about uh, wanting to make Apex Legends bigger than the Battle Royale mode. And so they've been doing like, they do a lot of limited time modes all the time in Apex to kind of test the waters, test things out to make, to figure out what works for them and what the future of Apex is going to be. And they settled on this new 3v3 mode, which is, I guess, basically, you can, it's kind of, it's kind of comparable to something like Valorant or Counter Strike, where it is, uh, it's last man standing, but it's 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 over the course of three to nine rounds. Where the in order to win the whole thing, you have to beat your opponents by two rounds. Uh, and between each round, there is a story system where you buy weapons, you buy uh, consumable items, and all the stuff to prepare for the next round. You're basically going round round for round, uh, trying to take out your three opponents before they take out your team. Um, and it's really fun. Like we had a, we had a really great time. Yeah. It's really cool. The, the several custom maps, they made two custom maps for this three V three arenas mode. And then they are repurposing three other areas from the BR maps from the three battle Royale maps. Um, a section called our, uh, artillery from, uh, Kings Canyon. And then there is thermal station from one of the other maps. Uh, they're just kind of taking these chunks and these other POIs and bringing them into this 3v3 mode. But yeah, it's super sick. It, it's intense. Um, you start off on one side of the map, the other team's on the other, and you have that little buy moment and you have a certain amount of money and say, all right, should I go all out and use all my money on getting a really, really good gun? Or should I go for a cheaper gun and get grenades and health packs and shields and things like that to sort of um, last longer in the fight. Um, And the more you kill, there's also, um, there are also pieces of, uh, I forget the name of the resource, Bless. I forget the name of the resource. Uh I don't even know if it has a name. It's, it's it might just, just be it's, called resource. It's around the world, and you can kind of pick yeah. up little canisters that give you money for the next round that you can then buy better weapons with. You can buy your ultimate with it as well. You start off each round with, I think, one to two of your tactical abilities, which, you know, Lifeline, she t- puts down her little healing bot, um, or Revenant shoots out an orb that takes away your abilities for a, a certain amount of time. But then you can buy your ultimate for a certain amount of money and it gets more and more expensive. But that's kind of like the risk and reward going into it. Uh, Man, we (laughs) it was me blessed. I don't know how many other people in the press playing and a lot of Apex streamers. 
Oh, and we no. were getting yes. our shit kicked in. We also got carried quite a bit by some really, really good streamers. Uh, the, the rule was they were very explicit in saying, do not team up, guys. We want this to be a fun, fair experience for everybody. Do not team up. But I was like, bless. They're not talking to us. <laughs> they're talking, yeah. they're they're talking, talking to, to the people who are going to yeah. steamroll other players and pros that'll, that'll team up and make super squads. Me and Andy amongst this group of people, we're not the super squad. And so we're like, oh, it'd yeah. be cool if we, if we <laughs> team up, which in retrospect might have been a mistake because it was two out of three of us who were more on the press true, side. Not so true. But see, I was going to say, was, it's side. possible they were telling you not to team up because you'll have more fun because, yeah, you and your friend just getting your fucking head kicked <laughs> in for a couple hours isn't yeah. great. Yeah, yeah it was fantastic. Up. It was fantastic because like yeah, we would we would partner up with people. One of the one of the dudes that we got mashed up with uh for three v three was like was a dude who we got we got in there and we're like, Oh, what's up, man? Like, you know, what do you do? Are you press? Are you uh streamer? He was like, Oh, I'm a pro. I mean Andy are like, Oh huh. like, <laughs> like like professional apex and he's like, Oh yeah, yeah, I do this professionally. And yeah, like, oh, you, it I was, got bad news, brother. <laughs> it was yeah, how much you can carry. <laughs> it was interesting getting his perspective because in the new season they are changing some things on the uh, map. Gosh, I always want to call it Horizon, but that's the character. Oh, you're um, Olympus. Not World's Edge. Olympus. Olympus is a is one of the newer maps that they released that they are kind of adding some changes to, and they also introduced a new hero named Valkyrie. And she has really strong ties to the Titanfall story. Her father was one of the dudes that got killed by the bad guy in Titanfall 2. Um, and she oh. is always this character that's like wanted to learn mechs and things like that. And they're always like, oh, you're, you can't learn how to do mechs. Or you can't fly this machine or whatever. Uh, get out of that flying death machine is what they told her in the short uh, story. But she has like this little kind of jetpack suit that she flies up. She's the first character that can really fly in that way. Um, if you don't use her well, you are a sitting duck up there. So, so many times that I just flew up and just like destroyed in midair and I fall down to the ground and I'm, I'm just yeah. downed unless somebody comes and reses me. Um, she has uh, kind of a missile barrage ability and yeah. her ultimate, you and your teammates can hook up to her jetpack and you all can fly away and kind of get out of a situation or maybe get the high ground. There were a lot of cool situations that we found ourselves in with other really good players. Um, and uh, they introduced a new bow, which is just, yeah, you know, it's bow a bow and arrow. Bow. They're like, bow and arrows are dope. You know, this thing does a lot of damage. <laughs> if you, it, was really it was awesome They're to hear one wrong. of the designers. Yeah, one of the designers is just like, yeah, why not have a bow? We love bow and arrows. They're awesome. And there's a couple different add-ons that will make the pellets sort of spread out like a shotgun or another one. I forget what the other add-on does. But it was cool listening to when we teamed up with the pro and him being like, yeah, this is going to suck this whole bow uh, meta. Like, I think it's going to become the meta already. It's so yeah. strong right now. Like, if it, be, if, it, it be, if it becomes the thing that people are going to gravitate to because it is, it ends up being one of the stronger weapons and it becomes the meta, then it's it, for as a pro, from his perspective, perspective, he was like, oh, it's going to suck because... I'm going to have to use this thing and learn this thing. And I was like, oh, shit, I never really thought about that from the pro side. I just use whatever gun I want. Yeah, it's pretty sick. Uh, it was a fun event. I, I'm i stoked for the mode to actually be available because it's a cool way to experience Apex Legends without the daunting nature of Battle Royale and getting your shit kicked in as soon as you drop and then getting discouraged. You know, with this, it's it's 3v3. And if... If you kill their team first, you go on to round two. And then I, it's just, it's a really cool, yeah. um, it's a really and cool system that a lot of games have done before, but it works with this, especially with the legends, especially with their abilities. Uh, the, the spaces are big enough to sort of let the characters breathe. And as time goes on during a round, a circle does kind of close in. So you will eventually have to face on, uh, face each other a little bit more head on, but I, it was a lot of fun, bless. Yeah. I had a lot and of fun if you get steamrolled too, like it'll be over in three rounds, which is the nice thing. Like you can go up to mm. nine rounds, meaning that if you go back and forth, that you can have this more extended out match where you guys are basically fucking rivals by the end of it. But if it, if you're getting steamrolled, it is not fun. They mentioned this in their preview that hey, we know that it sucks to get knocked over over and over again, and so if by round three you're getting three would then you're just out of there, which I think is a, is a really good thing for it. And yeah, I'm super excited to see how people people take to it because. Playing it, I'm a bit concerned about how it is. Like for me, 
for us, I would say, as people who have played Apex before, and enough Apex to understand pretty much every system and mechanic in the game, I could see a newcomer come in and it not only be this thing of, all right, what are all the different systems in Apex Legends? Like, what what is the sliding? What are the different character abilities? Like, what are like what are uh, the resource gathering or the crafting materials gathering? What is all this stuff? But then also learning the rules of what this 3v3 mode is. You know, I think it might be a lot to take in for newcomers, but uh after it only took us as people who've played apex like a, a round or two to be like oh you get what this is okay this seems like it's going to be a fun time and it, it was it was interesting hearing their perspective and and during one of the earlier moments of the presentation they mentioned yeah we hate getting third party just as much as you all do and yeah. that's like kind of the way to play apex legends is when you hear a battle going on oh Let's go poach on these teams who are probably weak by this point. Let's third party both of these teams to get the kills. And or this team just got wiped out. That team's probably hella weak. Let's go for yeah, them. They're, healing you know, right they're now. like, Let's go jump on them. They're like, we hate getting third party, too. And this is kind of a way to let these these apex legends kind of, you know, uh, take the spotlight and actually, you know, um, in some ways get to utilize them in some ways where, you know, in Battle Royale, you don't really fully get to do that because you're probably dead. As soon as you drop down, unless you're dropping hella far away from the action, yeah, um, yeah, it was, and, it was fun and as hell. Like it was these char- these characters are so cool. Like the Apex Legends roster, I think is so dope, and those characters I think would translate well to a mode outside of Battle Royale. And so I was expecting them to go something along the lines of uh, something that is more team deathmatch, team deathmatch Titanfally, or something that is more along the lines of Overwatch because Overwatch has their hero characters as well, or something that's like Rainbow Six Siege. So to see them go the more, uh, I guess tactical 3v3 route as opposed to those other ones i think is fascinating and i think we'll probably i think it's probably going to result in uh people getting really into it because it does playing it it did feel different enough uh and fresh enough and i think it spokes i think it speaks uh good for the future uh of apex because i think you're going to see them continue to add modes like this and i wouldn't be surprised to see them eventually do something where they're like fuck it man year year three or year four let's add titans or some shit see i think this is the gateway to that Remember, so can you tell me a little bit? And when when we were in the lead up to this event, they wouldn't tell us what it was really, right? They were just like, "Oh, Apex Legends event. You guys want to send some people?" Yeah, Andy and, and Bless will go. And then Bless you and I kept going back because they were tweeting, like, "If you like Titanfall, oh, keep your eye on what's coming." Up. And I was like, "Oh shit, is this about to be like a true Titanfall mode?" From what mm-hmm. you're saying, is it sound like the it's more it's Titanfall in the way that it's not battle royale, it's teams versus each other, and then also just this one character's tie-in is like that the end of it. That's what it's more of the character tie-in. Yeah, Yeah, it's she's the daughter of North Star, and I don't really remember North Star from the Titanfall two story. Not not even a fucking chance. But it's 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 a cool thing for the people who are super into the lore and they freaked out, and that's like awesome uh, because it's. there are other villains still out there trying to get at her because sure. of who her father is or whatever. Um, but the I saw a concern from somebody in the Discord because we had to join kind of this Apex Legends Discord with all the other devs and, and creators and streamers and press. And somebody said, yeah, I mean, this is just search and destroy without the searching and destroying. You're just... It's 3v3 Slayer. It's 3v3 Deathmatch, you know? Why aren't we doing objectives like Overwatch, you know, you push the payload or Call of Duty, you go plant the bomb or like Counter-Strike or Valorant or whatever. But I I don't think that would lend well at all to the way Apex Legends plays with the amount of zoning that these characters can do with all their abilities. And I just feel like when it's Slayer, you can just kind of run away from an ability and go hide whether... If you're trying to plant a bomb and suddenly it's this ability, that ability, that ability, and it's all just destroying you, I don't really think that plays well to to that. So I, I think that was one of the initial worries and concerns is that oh, it's just Slayer. Who gives a shit? But I think <laughs> yeah, it, I the, think the it thing to point out, for 3v3, these maps feel big for 3v3. And it's exactly, I think, because mm-hmm. of what Andy is saying. These characters are all over the place in terms of their mobility and introducing valk you know her alone she's able to fly places and get uh get everywhere so i think trying to trying to nail down something that works for the apex legends characters probably plays a big part into what are we able to do um but yeah i wouldn't be surprised like i i think them introducing valk as a character who has such a big uh backstory that ties into titanfall 2 uh i think her combined with this new mode which isn't titanfall right it's its own complete different thing but it's not battle royale 
I think are the first steps into maybe getting there where they maybe do bundle in a new mode that's maybe called Titanfall or the Titan games or how whatever they do to maybe tie uh, tie that into the Titanfall universe more deeply. Like I think I think there could be something there for it. or maybe they just release Titanfall 3 because everybody wants Titanfall 3. I wouldn't be surprised everybody. to see either. Yeah, everybody except for maybe EA. Uh, <laughs> it, it's also it's also just a good business decision, I think, for for monetization and yeah, getting sure. getting not only new players in but giving old players ways to level up that battle pass and go after their daily missions of use the SMG to get this do this much damage with the SMG or do this much damage with the the Spitfire uh, LMG or whatever. Sure. I think it's just a good way to keep players in there who may get burnt out on the idea of Battle Royale. It really reminds me of of Warzone, what we've seen with Call of Duty. And, you know, you play the multiplayer to level up weapons if you want, and then you can hop into Warzone to try it out and see how long, you know, how does it benefit you at all? And, oh, maybe I want to go to multiplayer and kind of quickly level up this other weapon because I, the odds of me finding it in Warzone are are fairly low and I might die before I even get a chance to do it. So it's just another way to keep players in that ecosystem. And it's, I think, a, a smart idea. And the fact that it's a permanent game type. This is not a, a it's limited not like time, a mode. time mode. Yeah, yeah. 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 Mm. Super important. Yeah, interesting. Greg, have you ever heard the term third party? No. But once they explained it, I was like, oh, I get it. Oh, I understand sure, that. Cool. Yeah, sure. Because, I mean, like, for me, that's like, you know, a Fortnite strategy we always do. <laughs> Yeah. Wait, hold on. Yeah. Let him fight it out. Let him fight it out. Yeah. <laughs> and then All we'll right, go through him. All right, come on, come on. Here's what I propose, though, Greg, for the oh, old Everybody, we have there. a proposal okay. from Tim Gettys, host of the Kind of Funny Games. From now on, whenever we do that, when we call the strat, we call it Mad Catsing. Okay? Oh, third so party. Third party. Controller We're Mad Catsing. Wow. Yeah. That's no, my contribution to this them. episode. It's been good, guys. See here. you later. No, Tim, there's more. You be soft real quick. You be soft on him. That's great. Moving on, we got, so you were talking about Warzone a little bit there, Andy. There's the new map. They were yeah. saying that the, the new map is here to stay. The old map is never coming back. What are your thoughts? Um, yeah, so they totally changed the map. It's still Verdansk. It's just a lot of the way that it's built out are different. So um, this is Verdansk in 1984. Because um, they had this kind of neat lead up to it where you go to this smaller map and you are trying to be the first team to find this bomb to nuke Verdansk, and it turns out that you were the one that nuked Verdansk. Um, it's this really kind of, they let it into being this, you know, here's this little tiny, this tiny game mode, because they have a smaller map called Rebirth Island, and they had, they, they had taken away Verdansk, I think, from being able to be played, and you were playing on this tiny mode, uh, and it was something like, stay alive and, and find this bomb and go plant it in the place or whatever. And when you do that, a cutscene essentially begins and these nukes start, a nuke starts flying or whatever, and it destroys Verdan. So it's like, oh, I was the one who did that. That's fucking cool, um, which is a really cool moment uh, for Call of Duty. Nowhere on the level of what Fortnite does with their big moments, sure. with their big events or whatever, but still pretty neat. Um, and but for whatever reason, we are now in the past. We're in 1984. So a lot of the POIs and areas that you're used to in Verdansk are fairly different, not only just um, aesthetically, but some of them are just completely, are, you know, architecturally different. Um, there's a big area in, in near the north side called Dam, and now it's changed to Gora Summit, and it is, it's kind of just like this big rocky uh, area that has all these um, gondolas that you can go from space to space. Um, they've... They've changed. I'm scrolling down right now because I, I need help remembering. There's an area in the top right called Quarry that is now called Salt Mine. And with that, not only changes the layout of the area, but the aesthetics totally. And they also changed the visuals, which I'm pretty happy about. The The shadows are the, the shadows kind of have a little bit more of a bluish hue to them um, as opposed to being like this this dark black shadow because people would just get these the skin called the rose skin. I'm getting really deep into the Warzone meta, but there's a there's a skin you can it. get in Warzone <laughs> called the rose skin, and it's a woman who's like in all black face uh, mask and everything like that, and they would use that to hide in the shadows. And so apparently with this new lighting, I think it looks a lot better, and um, not only aesthetically, but apparently it's just better for uh, for the gameplay uh, as well. But 
yeah, they changed a lot of shit in Warzone. Um, a lot of the areas are... There's a stadium that they had built out sometime la a year and a half ago, and now it is sort of the stadium being built in the process of it uh, because it's in 1984. And a um, bunch of old cars are around. The only one disappointing thing, though, the cars that you drive around with with your friends are the same cars from current war zone or like the newer war zone. Mm. So it's like you're running around and there's a bunch of like 80s cars just everywhere, props, and you can't use them. But the only cars you can use are like the buggies. And it. And I, this car's from 2020. That car's, you know, what, what's You're it doing breaking here? breaking my immersion. <laughs> it breaks the immersion, the Greg. 80s. Come on. It understand. breaks the immersion. Um, I think it looks better. It's I like, think it runs you see, better as I well. Saw, I saw this on TikTok the other day that in Endgame when uh, uh, the Black Widow's making the old uh, peanut butter and jelly sandwich or peanut butter expires in 2020. Come on. Yeah, I mean, this is supposed to be five. Oh, I thought you were going to say what you they, they canceled Peanut Butter two years Bullshit ago. Bullshit movie, and that's, why, that me, that's <laughs> why me and Andy are trying to re-review all the MCU We're trying to re-rank all of them, yeah. Uh, yeah, I think, it's, I think it's great what they've done. It's kind of what I've wanted them to do. I wanted them to do more of a Fortnite thing where, you know, certain areas are just being changed completely. Um, and I th they also have DLSS, which is huge. Oh. I haven't seen a whole lot of benefits from it yet, but... Hopefully they keep on working on that. And um, Warzone has always had trouble running on machines on PC mm. mainly. So yeah, um, you, you uh, you're talking about like uh, improvements on PC. I was talking to Nick today on the stream, and he was saying that he feels like there's um, not as much of an improvement on uh, running on PS5 uh, from he, what he was saying. He said it wasn't running that well from the update. So I'm interested to see what other console players are are feeling with Warzone. Oh really? Yeah. Hmm. I wonder, I wonder, um, but we all know Nick, he probably forgot to update his system or some shit. Exactly. Like, he's probably playing on PlayStation 4. He's probably though. playing he the know PS4 what he's, version. Yeah. yeah, yeah who yeah, knows? You who know, knows? He's, he's got his fucking mouse and keyboard connected to mm -hmm. his uh, mm -hmm. console like a big weirdo. Like, come on, guys. Well, yeah, I don't think I'm I've ever heard Nick be like, wow, this game's playing so well. It's always something like, oh, this is, why is this happening this way? This, <laughs> oh, this, man, this, the, the lag's messed up. Fucking Nintendo. Yeah. Um, I will say though that uh, <laughs> I, I just had his ass. <laughs> I had to Google it, and um, yeah, the next gen version of Warzone for PS5 and Series X are on the way. So it'll run better for him eventually when he when this mm -hmm. update comes out. It's optimized, but, yeah. But that's Warzone. That's the Warzone news. What's the new battle news? pass? Oh, hold on. Can I ask one question before go for we go? It. Go for it, Greg. So you talked about you know you've wanted them to move more to a Fortnite and updating and yada yada yada. Have they confirmed that they're going to be doing that on a more on a, on a on a different clip? Like, are they going to be updating and changing the map more and more, or is this just like a kind of like a change for a while? Like, this is just like. Well, I don't know. I th I just think we get so spoiled, right? Sure. Like Warzone has been out since January of last year. It it was like sort of I started playing it at the start of quarantine. Yeah. And, you know, um, throughout that time they would change POIs. They added the stadium um they added this big old boat full of zombies that like nobody liked because they thought that that update was going to be this update that just happened they were waiting for the fan base was waiting for gigantic sweeping changes and it was like a boat with zombies that would activate if you went near it and it's like ah fuck oh, people shit. were just people were getting frustrated because they look at fortnite with how quickly they update their games uh and you know take out fucking moisty mire or whatever the the pois in in fortnite are but i don't know how regular this clip will be greg i okay. i got to assume they're going to stick with this 84 it's called like verdansk 84 um and mm -hmm. i got to assume they're going to stick with this for a while because black ops is the current game now will they switch mm -hmm. to world war 2 when the world war 2 game comes out uh, uh, who fucking knows i have no idea okay i think it's kind of tough to predict but um yeah, I, I don't know. I, I think it's great. I'm I'm excited to get back to it. We only got to play it the first night. Um, so I'm excited for next week when hopefully Mike is back and we'll get back in some Warzone with Nick. Have you seen, like, is there a lot more chatter about it? I mean, I, I know Warzone's always being talked about, but has this actually drum, dr a drummed up interest or brought people back? I think so. Yeah, especially with a lot of, with how responsive that they've been recently to weapon weapons needing to be nerfed. I feel like that's always the biggest issue. Um weapon balancing sort of takes precedent uh over everything else it's always like the thing that everybody wants 
you know, to be prioritized is nerf this weapon, buff this thing or whatever. Um, yeah, I, I, I mean, it's still one of the bigger games being streamed. So people still really, really give a shit about Warzone. <laughs> <laughs> but do people still give a shit about Valorant? They do, man. Uh, new, new map for Valorant. It's called Breeze. It's a brand new season, a uh, brand new chapter, whatever the hell they call it. Um, it is the fifth map that they have added, sort of a tropical uh, type looking map, and it is very wide open. Um, a lot more different looking than some of the other maps right now in Valorant, where everything can kind of be just corridors and you're peeking a hallway or you're peeking an angle. This this seems a lot cooler. I'm I'm stoked for this map. Uh, I got to play it today once, and I got absolutely housed. Um, but this area is going to be all about knowing, you know, what angles to be watching out for, and that you know this area the, the people can be hiding over there. It's just a lot more open. It's kind of what I've been wanting from a Valorant map because whenever you attacking on Valorant is always one of the more scary things to do. Again, Valorant is like Counter Strike, and you start off. You attack for 12 rounds and you defend for 12 rounds. And when you attack, you got to go to either A side or B side and you plant the bomb and you hopefully win. But attacking is so difficult at my skill level because you don't have the confidence to run into an area because it's so claustrophobic and you know that people are just going to be looking at that area. Um, this has... A breeze, apparently, uh, I didn't get to see a whole lot of the map, but uh, it seems to have a lot of openings and areas for attacking. Um, I, I'm super excited about this. I hope that they kind of go with this. Um, so, I don't know. I, I hope they keep on using this sort of layout for the future and have more open sight lines, uh, just make everything overall bigger. Cause it seems like a lot of the fan base is loving it. Uh, shroud who Greg worked with one time, friend great of friend of Greg. Yeah. Great friend of Greg Miller. Uh, shroud tweeted out, please make all maps from now on like breeze. And shroud is a former CS pro, uh, counter strike pro. So, that's that's definitely great news that it seems like a lot of the pros on the scene are, are really excited about it. So I'm excited to get back into it. I love Valorant. I've been extremely addicted for the last couple of weeks now. I'm trying to get blessing on it. Trying to get blessed there. Dude, I'm down, man. I still I played with Tamor. I was going to say, did you see Tamor was tweeting about it? I played Tam. I played with him the other day. Damn, I should have responded. His first time ever. I got I Shimmer Hussein playing. from GameSpot in. He's back in the UK right now. I was like, what are you doing, Tam? You want to hop on some Valorant? He's like, yeah, sure. I've never played before. <laughs> and he already had it downloaded. And it was it was rough because it was his first time. But Tam is somebody. <laughs> it was rough. Tam <laughs> is somebody who's played, who grew up playing Counter-Strike. So he knows the general mechanics of you don't move. You can't really, you can't run and shoot or else your bullets are going to fly everywhere. You have to be really, really, um, you have to be really precise. Yeah. And with all the overwatch like abilities that valorant has to offer at one point uh character Ray's puts out her little drone and it's like a little robot on wheels that kind of just like drives forward it's like rocket and it was so great for town to be like what is that what is that <laughs> and he just like freaking out not knowing what any of these abilities are um yeah bless you gotta get in there man it's so much fun dude let's organize a date i'm down me I've you been, tam i've been so date. pissed off lately just like getting my ass whooped but it's it's that, it, like you all mentioning uh, Returnal, that you just got to go back and play it. You know, it's kicking your ass, but you want more of it. Um, yeah, so Valorant's great so far. New Battle Pass, new weapon skins. I'm sure I'll spend another like $80. Uh, I'm not looking forward <laughs> to that. Man, it's so expensive. Valorant is, Valorant is by far the most expensive game, dude. You could buy a knife for like $48. It's fucking ridiculous. <laughs> it is fucking ridiculous. With that, this has been the Kind of Funny Games cast. Thank you so much for joining us. If you are a patreon.com slash kind of funny game supporter, guess what? We got a fire post show coming up. Bless, is that right? Oh, that is right. I got Hell yeah, we got a bless who, baby. Let's do it. I'm getting Until my next notebook. time. Bye, everybody. Bye. Oh, you're not going to need your notebook for this, Greg. But I like having my notebook. It's like a security blanket. <laughs>